bitch will be defeated. Talking Knight of the Caregiver. This one is directed by Joe Cornett, who actually has a role in the movie as well. Now, Cornett looks like he's primarily done Western movies up until this point, so his first full foray into horror, at least as director. Now, this focuses on a, a young woman who is, works as a carer, and she is offered a job looking after this elderly woman, played by... Um, Eileen Dietz, who you may know from, of course, The Exorcist. And she agrees because it's good. she needs the money ultimately. So she goes out to her house, which is out in the middle of nowhere. And when she's there, she seems kind of pleasant enough initially, but she can't shake the feeling that there's someone else in the house. And she keeps experiencing strange phenomena. As the night goes on, it becomes more and more apparent that there is something kind of paranormal going on. Now, there may well be this demonic presence, but the question is, is this demonic presence um, there as well as the uh, the older lady? Is it there, uh, you know, is it the older lady? Is there something else going on? And what's the connection with this cop, played by director Joe Cornett, who we see kind of in a kind of a subplot, kind of uh, running alongside our main story? What will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss. So this is clearly quite a low budget movie, set in mainly one location, this one kind of particular kind of house. Um, let's talk about what I think works in this movie. So, um, you know, I thought it was an interesting kind of premise, and there's actually, uh, I think it's called gentophobia, which is fear of old people. So if you are a sufferer of that, then you, uh, you may want to avoid this one, let me just tell you. Um, but I found it quite an interesting kind of concept where we have this uh, this carer, and the reason why um, in this movie she has a, is, is being, kind of being victimised is because you are, as a carer, you are paid. You, know, you are your job is to care for people. Therefore, the idea being is that you are a kind of a you know you must be a kind of at least somewhat of a good person. So this demon is kind of attaching itself and trying to attack specifically carers because they have chosen to go into a profession where, um, you know, they are, their primary goal is to look after someone else. So therefore, it, it, you know, it's, it's kind of like that. It's a virtuous sort of career path, so to speak. So certainly, um, you know, shout out to the, the caregivers uh, because that's kind of basically what the movie's saying. But in, in the context of this, it also puts them in, in harm's way. So... It's an interesting kind of setup, um, and you, you like the fact that the, our, our our protagonist she she feels protective over this this kind of older lady, and she kind of you know she's getting a little frustrated with her because you know is she kind of just losing her marbles? Is she kind of in collusion with this kind of demonic force, or is she the demon, or is there something else? You know, she doesn't quite know, but she, she kind of wants to get out of there. But her instinct is to try and protect this 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 woman as well. So again, it's a good reason why she's not trying to get out of the house, so to speak. You know, it's, it's just trying to protect this woman who's like being difficult because you know she doesn't want to take her meds and all of this sort of thing. So I kind of quite like the the, the idea of the sort of setup there. Uh, there's some kind of quite fun practical makeup. Um, you know, it looks a little hokey, but it's a little too overlit. I'll, I'll be honest with you, but I still kind of quite enjoyed um, the sort of the practical kind of side of it, and I kind of quite liked. Uh, the idea behind it as well and um, we learn a little bit about its kind of origins and stuff as the film progresses so I could have quite quite enjoyed it I thought the performances for our main characters were all good you know mainly our two female leads uh, the caregiver and the kind of the older lady um, I thought their their kind of chemistry was pretty good and they go through kind of a bit of a journey and you know it's an all in one location sort of movie but I didn't think it was it kind of, uh, it got stale in that degree, if that makes sense. It, this, this house that they've chosen to kind of film in, 
you know, it, it, it does a good job of seeming quite kind of big and quite sort of messing the way it's filmed and stuff. And the movie's not overly long, so it doesn't kind of outstay its kind of welcome. And yeah, I think it was a, an, you know, a relatively well-paced kind of story that was uh, sort of made sense and easy to follow and you kind of enjoyed it for what it is simple kind of storytelling. So let's talk about what I think doesn't work in the movie. I think the, the Joe Cornett character, this policeman, seems somewhat shoehorned in. There's a few scenes with Eric Roberts uh, towards the beginning of the movie where he's kind of talking to him as a kind of a parapsychologist that um, that seemed unnecessary and just an excuse to have Eric Roberts as a name in there. And the, uh, the idea being here that this policeman is trying to um, find out what's happened to his mother who, who has mysteriously uh, disappeared. 26 years ago and he believes that there's a cycle of every 13 years and it's all that's kind of like you know how have you kind of managed to figure that out a bit based on this kind of urban legend that it's very convenient that it's happened to this you know this specific night um you know what that's kind of running concurrently um based on some information that we've been given about how long this demon's been around it doesn't seem that long that this has been going on. And I have to say, it just felt a little bit unnecessary. It almost felt like reshoots. I will say, though, that Joe Cornett looks a lot like David Carradine. Maybe he should consider doing, like, a Kung Fu revival or something along the lines of that. But, wow, this guy looks like David Carradine. But he's the director. Um, it's a little bit small in scale. Uh, as I say, it is only, to, it is only really in the kind of... 80% of it in the one location. You don't feel it's really having having a huge amount of, kind of consequences. There are some supporting actors, and I will include Joe Corner in this, where I didn't feel the uh, the acting was quite up to par. Luckily, our main two actors, I think, do a good enough job of 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 kind of supporting the um, you know the role and everything. Um, there is some evidence that when you when you are uh, when you, we go to this kind of like this old this old lady's house and. She's kind of being difficult. There's clearly something going on. Um, but our caregiver just to kind of seems to accept it. And she has the offer of help from her friend. But she doesn't accept it. So I thought, what was the point of having this kind of friend on the phone to begin with? So there's a few kind of roles there. The friend, Eric Roberts. And even to a degree, um, the cop. I, I felt like they seemed superfluous to the plot. It feels like they're just kind of padding out the running time and having you know, other characters for the for the sake of it. They don't really add much to the story. Um, certainly Ro Eric Roberts and the friend uh, sort of character, to be honest. Um, overall, it's kind of, it's a, a pretty good um, sort of watchable film. I don't think it's spectacular in any kind of meaningful way. It's just kind of like, it's okay. Uh, as I've mentioned there, that there's quite a good looking kind of practical demon, but it does look like makeup or on a couple of occasions, although I did like how it's kind of like um, incorporated into the kind of the story. It's all I'll kind of say on that. So overall, I think it's a fairly watchable kind of like horror movie that's gonna an okay kind of one-time watch if you don't mind the low budget, but I don't think it's necessarily one uh, you would necessarily go back to. Um, and I do feel it's maybe a little bit constrained by a little bit of lack of imagination and a little bit of lack of budget as well. So for me, it's a 5 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to you next time.